Welcome to Bible 360 Titus. Titus was a Greek missionary who had worked under Paul. He had gone with Paul to the pivotal meeting in Jerusalem in AD 49. Later, Titus assisted Paul in dealing with the sometimes troublesome church of Corinth, where he delivered several letters, including rebukes, to them. He was a trusted messenger, a sh troubleshooter, and peacemaker. Paul sent Titus now to oversee the congregations on the island of Crete off the coast of Greece. Now, Crete had a notoriously bad reputation. It's where we get the derogatory term, a Cretan. Crete was filled with missionaries. In the ancient world, missionaries were often at least as much gangsters as soldiers. Cretans developed a well-earned reputation for being dishonest, gluttonous, violent, and sexually depraved. Even their own religious stories and their own prophets, as Paul quotes one, demonstrate that the rule of the jungle applied in Crete. Paul sends Titus to appoint leaders and keep the church in the narrow way of Christ. Perhaps Paul sent Titus because he had experience in Corinth, dealing with Christians in a culture that was directly opposed to the message of the gospel. Also like in Corinth, Crete had self-serving leaders who had somehow finagled their way into leadership positions in the church. Similar to his letter to Timothy, Paul instructs his co-worker in Christ not simply to talk about actions people should take. He especially highlights the reasons why they should act like decent and loyal human beings. Paul is also discussing strategy, public relations, and encourages Titus to prepare himself to carry out the mission. Titus should know the mission and the goal better than everyone else and he as a leader must be committed or the mission will never be carried out. Likewise, Paul highlights how important it is that the rest of the elders Titus is teaching should be trustworthy and committed to carrying out the mission, not just in their words, but in the way they conduct themselves. This means that just simply being a good or an effective leader does not qualify someone to lead in the church. There are standards to be upheld, otherwise the church will crumble and break apart. Christianity is not a business or only a compartmentalized portion of a person's life. It's a new life lived in the light of all that Christ has taught and done. Paul believes that the Christian message can be communicated in the way Christians live and the culture that they create. This new community is an attractive witness to the world. In order to do that, particularly in Crete, the new and virtuous way of life needs to be lived out or the message will fall on deaf ears. Following Christ entails embracing a totally different value system than the hedonistic and self-centered culture of Crete. How Christians live and how their leaders act matters. If Christians are no different than anyone else, untrustworthy or nasty to their families or others, who's going to bother listening to them? If Christians understand this, they will see through the duplicity of self-serving leaders that don't really care about the message of the gospel, but simply see an opportunity for money or power or sex. The Christians in Crete have accepted impure and greedy leaders who say the right sorts of things, claiming to be Christian, but Paul says of them, to the pure, all things are pure, but to the defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Both their minds and consciences are defiled. They profess to know God, but deny him by their actions. They are detestable, disobedient, unfit for any good work. A corrupt leader is a corrupt leader, regardless of whether they claim to be a Christian or not. Paul doesn't need Titus to get overly fancy in his teaching. Rather, he needs to teach older men to be self-controlled and centered in both love and faithfulness. Older women are to avoid intoxication and be good examples of faithfulness to their husbands and be dutiful and loving mothers. Young men should not be out of control. Rather, they should be respectful not belligerent to others. Paul urges Titus to be an example of integrity, hard work, so that no one can honestly speak against the church or the gospel. Paul's instructions to all these different groups are entirely consistent with the gospel message. The point is not how privileged or powerful our position in society is. The focus of Christianity is not so much on what's best for me as it's on what's best for others, what's best for Yahweh and for the sharing of the gospel. The gospel has never been about self-advancement. It's always been about service, love, and loyalty. The job of each of these groups is the same, ultimately, even if the ways they carry it out are varied. We may assign different values to different positions in society, but the gospel doesn't. The world may value the contributions of masters over servants or male over female, but God does not. In the midst of this Cretan culture that was consumed with partying, carousing, and deception and serving yourself, simply being a decent, kind, and faithful to Christ and others was of a paramount importance. Paul says that we can certainly relate to pursuing sinful desires and being slaves to our passion, but something dramatically changed when God, in his goodness, not ours, rescued us from that way of living. 
In fact, God totally remade us, washing us in the spirit-infused waters of baptism into Christ, so that we are no longer slaves to our flesh, but heirs of an eternal inheritance, which outshines anything this world could offer us. Paul advises Titus to focus on these gifts and the kingdom of Christ. But getting caught up in petty squabbles about Torah regulations or super technical arguments is not really beneficial. Rather, those things that Jesus and the apostles emphasize, Titus should emphasize. Things such as God's grace, love, forgiveness, repentance, and living as good neighbors and citizens. These are worth teaching and repeating. But those who simply want to sound impressive or use arguments to distract from these wholesome and fundamental Christian concepts should be warned and then shunned. Anyone can make a mistake, but a teacher who ignores sound rebuke from Christ is warped and hard of heart. If you follow them, Paul says you will share in their demise. Paul's closing remarks, like the letter itself, remind us that Paul is hardly a lone wolf, but relies upon a team of fellow workers and supportive Christian congregations who work together to share the gospel. Even as an evangelist and preacher, Paul is readily acknowledging that Christian witness is often a matter how we live and treat one another. It may take effort and self-restraint, but it is well worth it to strive to live as respectful, self-controlled individuals, to be faithful to family, friends, and our church, and God, and develop a sound faith and to be generous in word and deed.